That's an extreme example of junk food overdrive. It's terrible. <laughs> There's a very good reason why we gravitate towards those crackly bags of deep fried goodness. And it has everything to do with the energy hog of our three pound brain. You see the noggin is but a fraction of our weight, but all the thinking it does takes up a huge amount of our body's energy. That's where junk food comes in. We're hardwired to seek out quick and dirty calories, given that our ancient ancestors didn't have supermarkets at their disposal. Coming by food was a lot harder. And when you did, particularly foods with natural sugars and fats, your brain would light up like a pinball machine. Fast forward 10 of thousands of years and our brains still get excited about the prospect of a sugary or fatty treat. And that's because the evolution of our brains hasn't been able to keep up with technology's ability to create delectable processed foods. So sure, we need a kick of sugar, but we don't need a giant slab of cheesecake to do the job. But does the neurotransmitter dopamine know the difference? Nope, dopamine just lights up the pinball machine of pleasure. In fact, it's gaming the medial forebrain pleasure circuit, an evolutionary ancient region of the brain that exists originally because we want eating food and having sex to be pleasurable in order to survive, propagate, and ensure our genes make it to the next generation. So, okay, junk food is pulling all the levers on our pleasure circuitry. No big deal, right? Wrong. The reason is that when you stuff your mouth with ho-hos, you're creating robust pathways in the brain that lead to that ding-dong reward of dopamine. The brain remembers that feeling and it wants more. And here's the thing, this turns into addictive behavior. The more you do it, the more it takes to feed the beast. Consider that 90% of cases of obesity are due to food addiction. Now consider that food addiction acts the same way that some drugs like heroin and cocaine act on the brain. When Dr. Belinda Lenners of Harvard University scanned the brains of cocaine addicts and food addicts, she found the same loss of dopamine receptors in their brains. And the loss of D2 receptors is a clear sign that addiction has taken hold and now requires more and more of the substance to provide a fix. The junk foods that make our brains sing the loudest are the ones known as supernormal stimuli, the exaggerated version of sugar, salt, and protein. You can think of this as the porn version of what exists in nature. That's right, that crispy chip you're holding is no accident of technology. According to a New York Times article by Michael Moss, in one year Frito-Lay dropped $30 million on research to create the perfect mouthfeel, aroma, and crunch of chip, even using a $40,000 device to simulate a chewing mouth to test and perfect the chips. And you know when you put that air-filled orange dusted delight on your tongue? That's something called vanishing caloric density. When the product melts so quickly on the tongue that the brain doesn't even get a chance to clock it. So you end up not even realizing that you're taking in calories or getting full. Which is why you can get to the bottom of the bag so very quickly. Seriously, nothing is left to chance. Even that crackling sound of the bag is designed to evoke Pavlovian cravings for the contents inside. So what about you? What's your junk food addiction? Mine are these jalapeno chips, which really get that dopamine rush. And what about you guys? Let us know in the comments below. And to keep the videos coming, make sure to subscribe.